very short time, I want us to talk about tithing. I want to take a few Sundays, if the Lord permits, until we get this thing sink in our hearts. It's not about money, but it's about your relationship with this God. And I want us to look at the, our theme verse in the book of Malachi chapter 10, uh, chapter 3, verses number, number 7. The Bible says, and yet in the days of your fathers you have gone away from my ordinances and you have not kept them. Malachi chapter 3 verses number 7. And you have gone away from my ordinances and you have not kept them. Now he says, return to me. Return to me and I will return to you. Thus says the Lord of hosts. But you have said, in which way shall we return? Verse number eight, the Bible says, they ask another question. Would a man rob God? But you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? And he says, yes, you have robbed me in my tithes and the offerings. Can you see what this scripture says in the Message Bible? It's important that we give you this uh, translation so that you can get it back, you can get deep down in your heart what God is saying. Let's, let's begin number seven and go to number eight. You have a long history of ignoring my commands. That's not a, way, a good way to start a conversation with God. When he says, you, you have a long history of ignoring, or ignoring my commands. You haven't done anything I have told you. Not very good. But he says, now, return to me. I can only return to you when you began, begin by returning to me. Says the Lord, God of the angel of the armies. Then you ask, but how do we return? I hope this is not describing somebody in this church. That when God comes to you, you say, and you, you have a long history of ignoring my commands. And if such a person is here, then put things right. Number eight, begin by being honest. This is God saying, do honest people rob God. It's very interesting, this conversation is very interesting. Now begin to be honest. But you remember you have a long history of ignoring my commands, he says. Begin, be, being, begin to be to being honest. Yani uanze kuwa honest. Somebody who can be depended upon. Then he asks, do honest people rob God? He tells you to begin to be honest. And when you begin to be honest, then he asks you, do honest people rob God? That's a very strange conversation in a Sunday like this. We didn't come for such a, a conversation with God. We came to be blessed. We came so that our problem can be rolled away. But before they are rolled away, he says, how have we robbed you? Then he says, in the tithe and offering, that is how. Then number nine, and you are under curse. The whole lot of you because of you are robbing me. I will not talk about this now, but this is a scripture we need to consider. Because whatever you do in this life, there are consequences. 
You can do whatever you want to do. I can do whatever I want to do. But no, be it known to you, everything you do, there are consequences. And before you do it, consider the consequences. And many times when you consider the consequences, you change what you wanted to do. Number 10, bring full tithe to the temple treasury. Last time we found that Jesus does not sit at the back, does not sit in the front. He sits at the treasury when they were giving their offerings. So there will be ample provision in my temple. And then he tells you, test me in this. This is like what the Bible says, honor your father and mother. And because you are encouraged to do that, you are told, when you do that, I'll give you a bonus. I'll give you sweetie, sweetie, so that to encourage you, to make sure you don't miss it. So he says, bring all your tithe in the treasury. That may be provision in my house. And even if you don't want to bring, test me in this one. Come and sit in the village and say, man, in the fanya. This is a very interesting conversation with God. Test me in this. And see if I don't open the windows of heaven itself to you and pour the blessings beyond your wildest dreams. I told you last Sunday and I want to tell you again. When you tithe, all the benefits are yours. So I say to you this morning, even for selfish reasons, even for personal reasons, go this way of tithing. I came to tell you this morning, God is telling you, test him. I pray that every one of you, you shall take this challenge, not once, but it shall be your lifestyle. And I told you last Sunday, by the grace of God, purely by the grace of God, I don't know how, but by the grace of God, I know in my knowing we have no deficit. But God has been gracious. How we went through this many months from March, I can only say the grace of God has been sufficient. In this church, we have never lacked. We have never gone in lack. But we turned it around by the grace of God. And you decided we are going to be a blessing to the community. We are going to feed the community. We are going to feed the members of this church. How, I don't know. So please understand where I am coming from. And it's important I cannot say with confidence that God brought corona. But I can say with confidence he allowed it that we may learn something. I pray that you and me and us, we have learned something. And during one of the things, among the many things we have learned or we are supposed to learn, is whom do you trust? Jesus called his disciples one day and said, by the way, what do men say I am? They said, you are this, you are the other. Alamu wakawambia, na nyinyi munasemaga mimi diyo nani? He went back now to the basics. And this corona time, it has come so that we may consider whom do we believe. Do you give your offering because it's a Sunday service? Do you give offerings because the offering bag is passing by where you are? Or do you give because you have a relationship with this maker.
Do you give? Do you pay your tithe? Because you come to Sunday service. Or do you pay your tithe because you have a relationship with the Lord? I am tempted to say something I don't want to say. So now I will say what I don't want to say. And when I say what I don't want to say, I have not said what I didn't want to say. So if you hear what I didn't want to say, May it be known to you that I didn't say what you have heard because I didn't want to say what you have heard. In this time of corona, you know there was no, there was, the doors were not open. There was no offering bags. Si tukua tunalipa nazile tunajua zetu. That means if I want I can tell you how much you gave. Tuangalieni na msiangalie chini. I'm looking at you. I said I'm not saying what I'm saying because I don't want to say what I'm saying. So what you are hearing is not what I want to say, but I am saying what I don't want to say. Because unajua hatukuleta hapa. Si ni kweli? Sababu hapa hakuwa hapa. Sasa tulikuwa na uru, tukasema, all right, it is a pay bill, it is hiyo ingine na ingine, siyo inaenda. Sikure inaenda, unaweza kujua ni nani. Now, let me ask you. And if you said I asked you, I said, you know, you know my, my, my conversation. That means, where you gave, where you paid, siri ingia. That means, if I want to know, I can know. Now, I want you to take your record sheet from the 22nd of March and present it before God. Wengine mutasema, pana ni mewekelea isi yangu, lakini kwa nini na jina yako? This road is for the few. Consider your ways. I consider my ways. I am happy for every one of you because you came to church. You don't know why. You don't know how. I am happy that you came. When I see all of you this morning, I know for sure the Lord has answered my prayers. And many people have prayed that you are here. Even yourself, you prayed. You come. The Bible says, the sheep hear the voice of the shepherd and they follow. We are in a difficult situation because the sheep are hearing different voices. Different voices. Me, I want you to serve God because you have a, a personal relationship with him. Let me tell you from the depth of my heart, I wish I wouldn't say this. Let me say this. That the life you live is more important than the offering you drop here. Allow me to tell you, the life you live is more important by far, by far, than the tithe you pay. God is looking for people with a relationship. He says, I love you. I am you, you are mine, I know you by name. Let's do these things because we have a personal relationship. May the Lord help every one of us. In 
this church, we will not keep your records. And even now, up to now, we have not. And we will not. Even those records, I'm telling you, I don't look at them. I don't know who did this and who did not do that. I only know myself. I only know myself. My wife is here. I didn't ask her. I have never asked her. And I have no intention of doing it. Because one day, she shall stand before the judgment seat. I either be behind her or ahead of her. We shall not be together. Therefore, if I'm not going to ask her, if she's not going to ask me, why should I ask you? Why should I ask you? But I want you to work with the people who have a personal relationship with this God. That's why I'm teaching you this difficult teaching so that you get it. Bring full tithe to the temple. Bring all the tithe. Let me tell you this. I told you last Sunday, I may give 100,000 here. It's a lot of money. But somebody will give 1,000 here. But this is a full tithe. This is not a full tithe. He should have given 150. God is not looking for the amount. He's looking for obedience and faithfulness. That's why if I look at 100, I will say, oh, dada, ubarikiwe na ubarikiwe. Hata kama nikuwa naombea, I can pray for you. Na nitatameke kidogo, na nineme na dune samabu, naona miyamoja. That's why I'm not God. Akina mwambia, dada, niyo ya ubarikiwe. But God is saying, why have you eaten part of the tithe? But this one, he says, welcome good and faithful servant. It is important you understand this. Widows of heaven will be opened for you. The blessings will be poured over your life. And number three, you shall have and enjoy more than enough. What does number 11 say? For my part, there are two parts. There is your part and God's part. I will defend you against marudas, protect you from the wheat fields and vegetable gardens against the pradas. These are all these are devourers. And he says, the message of God to the angel of the armies. For my part, I pray that you shall do your part. And God is faithful. He will do it. I will defend you against all marudas, protect your wheat, and fill and feasible gardens from the pradas. It's another way of saying, I will rebuke the devourers. Number 11, number 12, what does he say? You voted the happiest, you be voted the happiest nation. You will experience what it's like to be a country of grace. I tell you, we have experienced grace in this church. Allow me to tell you, in this corona, this church has given out more than any other time. I can tell you for sure, we have fed other people. I can't tell you how many pastors and bishops said, Pastor, 
kama umebakisha rufu moja mbili nilitia nilushie mbili and you have not disappointed any of them and to us is a humbling experience humbling experience a country of grace a church of grace believers of grace this is where i want to take you that you be a sister of grace you will be able to see the grace of god a brother of grace everybody of grace a home of grace it's not how much you are earning but the grace of god the grace of god a church not having a lot of money but a church where the grace of god is ruling and reigning this is the life i want us to live but you must obey the scriptures that you must give a full tithe number 10 let's go to number 10 i have eight points i've only gone three or four i don't intend to finish bring all your tithe to the temple when it says all let me finish by giving you a story in the bible in the book of acts chapter 5 acts chapter 5 and i want to dwell on the tithe full tithe act number 5 chapter 5 let's go quickly my brother act chapter 5 act nimepotea ime wow there is a story here of a man called ananias na mnamjua sana Ananias and his wife Safira convincing in his in, in 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 this with him sold a piece of land number 2 they decided to piece, uh, to buy a piece of land and bring everything to the house now they were doing it willingly nobody compelled them that's why i told you the tithe it is your choice and my choice nobody will compel you nobody will keep records for you nobody will follow you is according to your willing heart and he kept part of the proceeds and his wife being aware of it bought a certain part brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles let me tell you this Unajua hawa jamaa waliuza shamba. I want you to imagine the price of a shamba. Maybe they bought they sold the shamba for 10 million. And they had told apostle Peter, now tunaka shamba hapa we want to give uh, to sell and bring the money to the church. They, 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 they did it willingly. 10 million for example. But they said, "Wacha tutoe 8." to a kabile for a rainy day you may laugh at anania but i can tell you very few of you have given money here more than ananias na unamwambia ameimba ameuza shamba yote 10 million or whatever million lakini akaweka mbili when god tells you about tithe he says you can keep all of it because ada kama umekula nusu na yule hajatoa uko sawa in my eyes but in the eyes of the church you are a good brother you are a good sister but in the eyes of god he says you are a robber what does number 2 say number 3 But Peter said, "Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep part of the price of the land for yourself?" We don't have to obedience. I don't want to continue from here because my aim is not to threaten you because that's not my business. My business is to tell you the full counsel of God then you choose. 
Namba tu inauliza hivi. Inasema hivi. Namba tu. And he kept part of the proceeds. God is asking you for a full tithe. Bring all the tithe. And I told you everywhere the word tithe is that is all. Sasa kazi yako uangalie ulipewa 10000 ukatoa 500 ukatoa 950 Mungu anakuuliza si yote ilikuwa in your control why did you give part that is where the rubber hits the road and this thing i was taught in 1972 actually when i learned about tithing i was not even saved but i got it and even when i got saved it's still in my bones those many years is an issue of obedience Peter is asking him the lad was yours you decided to sell it you could have kept all the money nobody asked you to bring but why did you keep part of it all the time you have is in your control kwa nini ulitoa ukaweka zingine may the lord deal with all of us i know you are quite on me i'm also quite on myself but let me tell you that all the benefits of tithing are personal they are all yours may the lord help every one of us it's not about financing god's kingdom and for me where i stand i say and i stand by this scripture when jesus said i will build my church god has a way of financing all his projects he says i will build my church that's why you found in this church because i knew that long time ago we have never struggled we have never threatened anyone kama tulikuwa nataka pesa ya basi ikitosha we don't follow your pledges we don't follow what you said you are going to give because we want a bus god has given me us a bus sawa your chapter closed because it's an issue of you and god and this is the way i want us to walk nobody is going to pressurize anyone May the Lord help everyone. I know it is tough. I know it is difficult. I wish I could sell it, say it the way I feel it in my bones. But I want to be soft with the, every one of you. And I told you this church after corona is the church that is going to experience rapture. Na hiyo kanisa itakuwa tofauti. when we meet with our leaders they tell me pastor there are so many people at home can we go home and call them i said yeah go but when i say that i ask why should they go and then i ask ask myself why shouldn't they go mimi niko hapo na hapo because let me tell you You are in charge today for your own benefit. Ni kweli ama si kweli? But because we are a human, we will go and tell them. And please go and tell them. But when you tell them, don't threaten them. Persuade them, encourage them. The Bible says I was glad when they told me to go to the house of God. I am happy for every one of you who is in the house of God and may the Lord help us. But let me tell you 
after corona, things are going to be elephant. Things are going to be elephant. My prayer and my desire is that none of you shall be left behind. As I stand here, on one side, I'm happy because I can see you. On the other side, I'm sad. There are some of you I should be seeing, but I'm not seeing you. Then I'm asking, am I shepherding well? I don't know. 